I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. down or not enough trees down and that's where we did when we did the temporary parking lot we put the sock erosion in and the guys didn't have it set properly so all the silt went into next door and that's what I was like no I don't want to it. everything's where it needs to be I don't want to be on the hook for anything if they say hey you said it was okay so I um, never went out there today and mocked everything off you feel in that little, let's call it a comedy of errors, for yeah. lack of a better. Yeah. You feel you lost two weeks' time? In, uh, no, they just come out there last week. They come out on Thursday. <laughs> the tree company, they were going to do it. And then I frankly called Merrill on Thursday. They called me back on Friday. He said to try to get somebody out as quick as he could, and they were able to get out this morning. So they went out there this morning, and they marked off where the sock is going to go and exactly where the trees are coming down. So, and then the tree company will be back out this week. He said if I get it done on Monday, he'll be out this week to get all the trees down, then they'll stop pulling the stumps. But I know when they pull the stumps and they stop doing that stuff, it's going to disrupt the soil, and I don't want any silt to go down the hill into the property next door, because that's what was happening on the front. So, I don't want any issues there. He's been treating me pretty good. So I don't want any more complaints to the planning board or to you guys. So... Let me ask you to look in your crystal ball, yeah. and I and I am, I know you're not the engineer, yeah. you're not the one doing the yeah. work, so this is conjecture on your work, but I'll ask you anyway. Yeah. When do you think the project will be done? You told me two, three weeks from when they start, and I actually canceled our tournament for this coming weekend, and we had nothing the following weekend anyway, so I'm hoping you can get it done, because when they're doing the work, it's on the right side of the building. Facing so, the building on the right. Yeah, so be on the right side of the building. So I would have to move the trailer ahead of that area to be able to use it, and we'd have no parking on that side. So I don't want to issue with parking on the street. So we just canceled the tournament for this weekend because he's definitely doing the trees and stop pulling out the stumps and hopefully to start digging the trench this week for the tank itself. Do we cancel the tournament? Or we we can't. No, we cancel this tournament. Yeah, cancel because there's a there's a season that ends that second weekend of June. Is the season's over? So we had tournaments every single weekend, and we originally thought he was going to be doing that work next weekend on the side where he's actually pulling the tanks up because that's when the other tanks are supposed to be ready. So we knew that weekend. So I'm hoping he can get everything that he needs to do in these two weeks. That everything's there and the septic system will be usable. But it just won't be covered and paved and everything because we're going to wait until the planning board goes over there grading and then we're going to grade everything and pave it. <coughs> Where are you with the planning board? Uh, we are on for the 14th public hearing. Okay. For the 14th. Merrill submitted the plans with the grading and the, the drainage and everything. And the in house guy is doing the review and he said to get back to Merrill and then figure it out. But okay. Okay. I'm assuming Peter knows what he's doing because he does the reviews here. He goes, I think this is going to work. Hope. Yeah, we review. He lessened the flow that was going, existing flow. So he doesn't think there'd be a problem because we actually lessened the existing conditions. We have less water going off the property now. Okay. Do you have any questions from Mr. Poirier? No, I think you covered just about all of them except for I'm a little unclear as far as the two to three weeks. So you think that that's probably going to start maybe in another? I'm hoping that the tree guys got out this week and they stop pulling the stumps and start setting up to... So you're hoping dig. we're looking at like the beginning of May to the, the yes. first week of May to get this started? Yes. And I'm, maybe the beginning of June for it to be complete? I'm hoping before then. I'm hoping before then because I don't want to have to pay for another month with the trailer and the porta parties. So, knock on wood, not many uh, complaints with the trailers as long as we yeah. keep up on it. Thanks, Lisa.
traps come around you. Now I'm caught as soon as I would have run. Get traps. That's your feeding. Are health agent is present. Ms. Kelly, do you have anything to... Nope, I saw the survey crews working today. Okay. You're out there? I went by there. I periodically go by the site. I keep an eye on it. I keep an eye on the cleanliness of the restrooms when they are not up to standard. Our friend gets a call and she gets people it. right on it. Yep. Um, so that site's monitored no less than twice a week for... Given, given the gravity of the situation, given the... the um, numerous complaints we received about it. I go by the site twice a week, and, and of course, I'm welcomed by the property owner to be there. Um, but I did observe the survey crews um, working and staking today. So I'm happy for you, and happy for those who utilize the facility that we're making progress. I don't find, and I'll certainly ask my fellow board members. I don't necessarily feel that I need to ask you to come in here on a, on a scheduled date, but I would like to keep the lines of communication open. So if yeah. we have something, yeah. we can reach out to you and you can come yeah. back. You're happy yeah. to come back. No problem. What I can do too is I can send you an email. I'll have your email. I'll send you an email saying, hey, they started cutting the trees down today. Hey, they're out there starting to do the Wonderful. work. That'd be great. Yeah, if I'll we send get you an email. I'll let you know exactly how the process is going. Okay, that's great. Okay. Could you include me on that email? Sure. And I'll, I'll have okay. uh, Sheila send out my okay, email yeah. address later. Yeah, if you just send me an email, just say respond to all these parties, and then I'll just respond to all. Okay. And then I'll just put it in there so that you know exactly where we are. Okay. As, as a courtesy, our, our third Board of Health member joined us a few moments ago, Mr. Newman. Last week. Yeah. And I thought that they marked the boundaries and where the sock goes and what trees come down. And they said, no, the engineer does. Well, they measure it out by tape, but I'm on the hook if it's not correct. So I didn't want to get into any of that. So Merrill was gracious enough to push us ahead of the schedule, get us in there Monday morning, came in today, and marked it all out so the tree company should come out this week, take the trees down, then they'll remove all the stumps, and then they'll stop the work. And you've been communicating with the health agent as far as, yeah. which you just said. Yeah. Yeah. But it's one yeah. I saw the crews on site today. Yeah. yeah. So I will email response. My main concern was that there was a paper trail and there was nothing being done. Oh, you yeah. had explained that yeah. there's, there's people, you've paid people, they're coming. Yes. They're gonna, we want to start to see work because we want to work with you. But yeah. And if oh, that's yeah. the case, then okay for now. But, okay. you know, as long as we communicate yeah. with us, then there's no miscommunication and we're aware of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that the septic system is up and operational as quick as possible. It's just the, the final grading won't be done until the planning board approves the grading for the drainage and everything. So right. that meeting is on the 14th, I think, 12th or 14th. Matthew, just email me today. All right, well, I hope you get some good weather and your crews get some yeah. good weather. Yeah, uh, tomorrow will be beautiful. So. It looks like it's yeah. coming. And we will be in touch. All right, thank you very much. Thanks and for coming in. Guys, again, thank you for welcoming me. Not a problem. Right, have you. a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next in our agenda, which is scheduled for 545, is our 8 to educate program which Mr. Newman would agree with me as he's been here the last few weeks he's been loving it uh, unfortunately we had a last minute cancellation so we get a, a reprieve of our aid to educate okay so we will continue on with our agenda next week oh. hi we have our health agents report Mr. Thorne good evening good evening so as the board may or may not be aware, and I apologize, there's not a written documentation to go with this, but um, Ms. Landy was out last week. She took a vacation. Um, I believe she was college touring with uh, children, which is a wonderful thing to do. Um, but unfortunately, it left me uh, pretty short-handed <laughs> here. So I apologize. There's nothing typewritten. Uh, office traffic is picking up immensely. Actually, the, the town hall was extraordinarily busy uh, this past week in particular. Um, just a quick numbers on the last week. I did over 20 inspections, three perk tests, plus all the office traffic and everything else. It is definitely spring in Pembroke. Um, a lot of the, again, we've talked in the past about distressed properties. Those distressed properties are hitting the market, um, which is a wonderful thing for Pembroke's tax base. Never mind the, the effect and the so-called blight they have on a neighborhood. Those are rapidly getting uh, purchased up and revamped, which is a wonderful thing for us. I know we've talked in the past, and, and Mr. Thorne and I have talked in the past um, with about the state receivership program. There's a push for towns to join that again. For those that aren't familiar, in a nutshell, the rece receivership program is a program entered into by the town, which allows the town to place a lien against blighted properties. 
it allows a contractor to come in and fix all building code violations and sanitary violations at a property and then place a lien on it equal to the value of the work that they've done. Um, that's it in a nutshell. It's a little more complex than that, but that's boiled down to its simplest points. It's something we've explored in the past, but honestly, the economy is taking care of more of these properties faster than we probably could legislatively. Um, we used to have a, an estimation of 200 to 250 unoccupied homes in the town, and I think we're now down to approximately 100. Uh, bank-owned properties on unoccupied properties, which is which is really huge when you consider that that number dropped in less than three years. So that's the biggest thing we're seeing is rehabs of those homes. There's been a lot of foot traffic and interest in those types of homes, a lot of jackets being pulled on those types of homes. Could you, uh, sure. no, go ahead. Could you possibly um, get Sheila um, a copy of what the verbiage is? On, um, on the receivership program? Um, yes. There's so actually a whole packet they sent out, but I, I'm happy to reach out to because, uh, again, the, the people that operate the receivership program, um, one of the contractors that works with them has just reached out again. I think the easiest thing would be is I will take his last missives and, through Sheila, have them forwarded to the board to read over. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm in wholly in favor of the receivership program. I just don't know if it's going to be as valuable as it would have been, say, four or five years ago when we had a lot more of these unoccupied blighted properties. Right now, I think anyone would tell you in Pembroke, anything that isn't nailed down is up for sale and being flipped, and people are making a great deal of revenue off of those types of properties. But I'm happy to pass along the information. Ed, you remember we met approximately a year ago with the very nice folks with the state with the receivership right. program? Um, and I will reach out to the state contacts and pass that along as well. Yeah, but I think you're right, Lisa, the economy is taking care of some of those properties. In fact, yeah, it's, it's a several month process for the town to take control of them. Um, and right now the desire to own them, but I absolutely am happy to get all that information into the board members' hands. Happy to do so. What does that entail in order for you to do? Just to you have to go in as a team. Something out now you have to go in as a team to the blighted <laughs> property. You have to make several attempts to, to have tried the owner of record of that blight property to take care of the issues themselves uh, requires some paper trails some filings in court through town council then you go into the property you document all the violations both building code sanitary code electrical code plumbing code you document all those and you take all those documents and you turn those back again to the owner and say you got to fix this you got to fix this and if they don't you put the property into receivership which means licensed contractors come in and correct all of those violations and then place a lien on the property through the town for the value of their work. Okay, and so how many are you saying are blighted at this current time? Did you say three? We, we were up to just hovering under, I would estimate, 300. We're down below 100 three, now yes. because there's so much demand so for housing. There's people going to banks trying to buy directly from banks at this point. Yeah. That's how desirable the housing in this town is and how much value it holds. Okay. There are, there are properties that are being sold and flipped before they even hit the open market, which is quite remarkable. Is this for occupied and unoccupied? No, this is mostly unoccupied. Right. Most of these are bank-owned properties, therefore unoccupied. But they're not the only reason. There are some. There are some properties that are also in. Um, I'm sorry. Um, when someone passes away, I so apologize. I forget the term, but there, someone passes, and so it's held in a it, not a trust. Thank you. Thank you. They're in probate until they get cleared. Sorry, I couldn't think of that word for the life of me. How many communities are doing this? Do you know, Mr. Thorne? You know, it's been a while since we... They had like 50, 53 or so. Yeah, it's it just been a while since we've looked, looked at this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, we'll go on their website and get a number. But it's been, you know, over a year since we last looked at this. Understand, it will cost the town money in the terms of you're going to be taking inspectors and putting them out into the field to do this extensive amount of work. Most communities that are part of it, they say they pick a day once a month that everyone gets together and do, does this. But the town, of course, is going to have to pay. Uh, obviously, my time is just a time away from this office. But they're going to have to pay the plumbing, the building, the wire inspectors, and everything else to come in and actually perform those. So it is a bit labor intensive, and it does cost the town's money. But the idea is that the revenue is received back um, when the property is finally repaired and sold. Well, we're not the ones doing the work. It's a contract. No, but it's company. still taking people away from their, their normal tasks and, and, and whatnot and, and dedicating it to that purpose. That was my concern because if you've got 100 houses and you're telling us, and you're asking for information yep. on 
Oh, this is, isn't it time consuming? And no, 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 it, it's time consuming to, to execute the program. Getting the information, we have all the information on hand through different links and everything else. It's actual execution. That's why most towns, for example, the example they gave us, most towns dedicate one, one day a month and they might try to tackle, you know, three or four homes depending on the severity oh, okay. in that one day. Is there so a you're not gonna website on this? Is yeah, there I'll send you all the links. There is, okay. there's, there's two. It's, it's the state portion and then the actual people that do it. But yes, I'd be happy to forward all those links. I might even have some printed documents from the, from the actual. But what's meeting. the title of this? It's receivership, property receivership. Well, I'm sure there's more to it than our five minute discussion. Oh no, there's there's a lot to it. At, at yeah. first blush, it it feels like from a this is gov a local more. government, it feels like a win win to me. That, that you know, inter and the time involved, it it is time, and to me, that's a cost of doing business. So. I'm anxious okay, being, to hear more about just, it. Just you know, it's being run out of the problem. Attorney General's office. I'm going to forward the link to Sheila right now, and that's a good place to start. Is right on the Attorney General's website. Um, no, those were the highlights, obviously, that I was going to update the board had Mr. Poirier not been here. That I saw survey crews on site staking property boundaries. Um, fantastic talk on um, dis uh, disaster recovery in Taunton this past Friday. Um, covering, unfortunately, the Las Vegas shooting, um, covering the Pulse nightclub shooting, um, recovery, government's involvement, um, the kinds of things. It, it basically was a good highlight of pitfalls and how to avoid them, um, success stories and, and areas for improvement. Um, so that was very beneficial from an emergency management standpoint. Those were the highlights. Other than that, it's been a lot of perks, a lot of septics, a lot of septic work going on, a lot of homes being sold, a lot of homes being flipped. Um, uh, uh, there's no inventory, so when a property comes on the market, it's selling in days, um, which for those houses, unfortunately, that have failed Title Fives, it puts in a severe time crunch on myself, the engineers, and the installers to move quickly to produce the documentation needed for closing. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Under old business, we have our Board of Health Initiatives. I've got the doc my copy right in front of me. I don't know if my fellow board members have their copy. I don't know. You need a copy? Those were not last meeting. I, have, I didn't bring them in my folder this okay. time, but okay. um, I did forward my... Um, Can you make a copy for Mr. Thank you, I did get that, Mr. Okay. Can you make yeah. a copy for Mr. Newman? Yes. Do you need one? No, sir. No, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, at our last Good meeting, Ms. McSweeney, you were not present. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Newman and I, we took a look at this list and we agreed that I would move forward on forming a subcommittee to look at the feasibility of a single-use plastic bag ban. So just to update the board, I am in the process of writing a mission statement for this subcommittee. I have not completed it yet. Uh, I am thinking, and I'm, I'm telling you my thoughts out loud, I'm thinking about having a board of five members, a board of health member, um, our health agent, so you're hearing that for the mm -hmm. first time. I'm thinking about asking someone from conservation, one of our selectmen, and I'd like to get two citizens in the committee. So a group of five, that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, I've reached out to a couple of people, nothing concrete. Uh, I think, I believe, and I might be wrong on the numbers, I, I believe there might be 36, and I could be off, 36 communities that have instituted a plastic ban of some sorts. That number, I don't know, I have 36 in my head. Um, and I think it's I one, one of them. Yep. Oh, which is? Plymouth adopted Plymouth. it. Thanks. Okay. Plymouth. So, and Plymouth is one of, you know, I, I took a look at the 36 communities, the three communities that are closest to Pembroke, which doesn't necessarily mean we need to mirror what communities that are close to us, but we've got Plymouth, Duxbury, and Bridgewater. Those are the three closest. So, um, that's kind of where I am right now. So I don't have, I don't have the members yet. Uh, the mission statement isn't done, but I'm moving forward with getting that done. Okay. Mr. Thorne, while you are here, would you like to comment about your town in, in terms of? Well, let me be more specific. It's not my town. It's Melissa Reed's town. I'm the town manager. Okay. So do, do you have any, and I'm not even sure myself how long the ban in Plymouth has been in effect, but are you seeing? I think it's been at least six months, maybe a little bit longer. Okay. Um, I know that um, where I live, all of a sudden, uh, magically, um, all the uh, 
paper bags were there, and and um, the uh, Shaw's that I frequent uh, down at Cedarville, um, they actually furnish uh, paper bags that can be reusable. You know that are nicely colored, and you know it's just not a brown paper bag. Not the cloth, not a cloth bag. That's not a, cloth. No, it's paper. So a, a, a nicer, if you will, than a brown plastic bag. Yeah, I, and I think it may have something to do with. You know the uh, the arrangement that their board of health, Plymouth uh, board of health, and and the you know the uh, grocery stores in the area have done. And I noticed that uh, it certainly increases the uh, paper products that you have uh, when uh, we have re uh, recycling. And then uh, you know while the recycling occurs. Uh, every other week, trash pickup is, is weekly. Um, you know, we actually looked at that a long time ago, but we didn't want to confuse the residents in Pembroke, so that's why we have trash and recyclable the same day, you know, every week. So, uh, but yeah, the, the paper products definitely increase. Okay, good. So that's a little bit of an update for my fellow board members. I, I, I certainly want you folks to be included, you know, in this effort. I mean, it's, 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 it's in capable hands. You can, you know, keep us updated. And, and I will, I will do know. so. Okay. So staying on the topic of our Board of Health initiatives, and this list, you know, some of them are very long-term projects, some of the things that we could maybe tackle a little more quickly. What I was thinking, and I would certainly reach out and get input from my two fellow board members, there are two items on the list that I would like to ask our health agent sure. to make a presentation to the board at our next meeting. The two items that I'm thinking about, the first one is under septic regulation oversight, which is the first bullet. I'm looking at the second item, which is B. Review and update the Pembroke sep septic system regulations to modify the current application forms to include filter cleaning, replacement date, vendor name, and number of, number of gallons pumped. So that's something that I would like to put on the agenda for our next meeting to talk about. The second item is under the Animal Inspectional Services, which is number five, Roman numeral number five, and it's the second bullet, B. Consider implementing a maximum number of livestock allowed on parcels under one acre. So my thought is that our health agent can make a presentation at our next meeting two weeks from this evening. We could certainly have a healthy discussion. We could discuss it the following week and potentially do some work on the issues and, and come up with a, a vote and move forward. But I didn't want to be the one who's cherry-picking those two items. Right. I'm certainly throwing it out to the board. Now, this this would be connected, um, Ms. Cullity, to the right to fund. You'd be looking at that as well? Yes, but the right... The right uh, bleh, easy for me to say. For anyone who has not read Pembroke's right to farm, one of the opening statements of Pembroke's right to farm was that it does not usurp or any way the, the regulations already in place or the board's a health authority to regulate. It's right in the bylaw as written. Mm -hmm. So this board's authority is not impacted by the right to farm. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, there's a, a perception of right to farm as right to do as, as I would as long as I'm farming, and that's not the case. And even the state will, will say right to farm is limited to safe husbandry and animals. It is subject to zoning and nuisance and everything else. For example, you can't say I'm farming, so I want to have, for example, a case we saw giant piles of manure. There, there are safety and public health threats associated with that. So the idea is of a, of a right to farm bill is also to ensure, ensure people can farm. Not that someone calls and complains because, well, I'm hearing horses neigh, or I smell the horse itself and I don't want to. That's what right to farm is supposed but to we're protect. But we're basically talking about adequate area for Correct. Um, farming and for livestock. All right, livestock. we're talking about overall density. Right. And there's, there's state overall density, which would probably upset most people. If you truly saw density that is legally allowed and being used, 
it's it can be upsetting. I mean, the legal density for a chicken is three square feet outside, one square foot inside. That means a chicken could could in theory legally be kept in a four by four box. Yeah which most people would say is not good. It's certainly not considered good animal husbandry. An animal kept in that kind of confines is going to develop respiratory diseases and other diseases by being in its own excrement in that type of a space. That's basically just the size of the laying bed. Co correct. You're exactly correct. So those are the kinds of things that, you know, these are the bare minimums allowed by law that this board may want to consider what is truly safe. For example, horses. Um, obviously, you don't want a horse right against a house or on top of a septic system. The, first of all, the horse could break it, plus the horse could hurt itself, put its leg through something and break its leg. So the, the current regulation reads, you will have a half acre per horse, a half acre being considered a, a, an ample space to build a, an appropriate shelter for the horse, plus for the horse to walk around and not be you know, overly confined where it could harm itself, harm others, or, or not have good access to, to moving around in fresh air. So that's the way that regulation is written. So the, the idea of reviewing them is, are we still consistent with your folks' thoughts on this? Because that's what it's supposed to be. It's your administration. Are we consistent with this? Do we want more than this? Do we want less than this? And there is something that is not addressed in there, as Mr. Fine highlighted, is at no time have we said properties of a certain size have any limitation on animals beyond the actual limitation for the animals themselves. What that means is, in theory, if someone has a backyard and wants to fill the entire backyard with goats, we have no restriction on that. If they literally have the square footage allowed for a goat, someone could have their house and their entire backyard fenced and just fill it with goats. Is that appropriate? I don't know. That's for you folks to decide. But I could give you examples of, of density at truly um, state limits, and you can decide is that appropriate for Pembroke, is that appropriate for an urban, you know, suburban setting or not. So, are you, on, be, are you on board with tackling those two issues? Oh, I'm going to do some homework. I'm going to be looking into that. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Newman? Uh, I mean, I know that that's, you know, we, that ties into a, 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 other issues as well, so it might be a good thing to get an update. And, Just you know, to get uh, yeah. even a preliminary, preliminary um, idea of what the regulations are out there um, for the different identities as far as the farming and the animal livestock and all of that being able to put together and see if things are coinciding because I do believe um, Ms. Cullity is really correct on the fact that there should be so much area per, per square foot per animal. Um, I know they do that up country and if they're going to do that up country it's definitely going to be down here. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're, we're I'll start yeah. tackling those. So but any you research you do, please share it. Okay. okay. Excellent. But the state limits. If one were to look up the state limits for, for a lot of animals, it would probably make you quite sad. Okay. Good. Excellent. Okay. Still under old business. We've got an update from our PTAD representative, which would be you, Mr. Newman. Um, it's small uh, because the one of the meetings I attended, they um, were basically wasn't a full members there so they did talk about some issues and I was unable to make the March meeting um, due to work so I haven't spoken to the a few of the members on it to find out what they might have talked about but they're looking into um, I like the approach they're looking into different things to educate which we all need to know about they're looking into speakers or rep, you know um, different kinds of people to come and maybe talk about it in the schools or they're targeting certain um, people or looking for certain people to maybe come to the town and speak to the youth and speak to the, you know, the, the middle school and the uh, high school and find the right type of speaker. So that's the update I have and then I'll probably by the next, not next week, maybe, I think they might be meeting this week so I, I'll check, I might have something for the next meeting. I'll let Sheila know if I do. You think it's a good, it'll be a good use of your time going forward? Oh, yeah, a lot of positive people there, and it's good information, um, you know, that they have, you know. Um, I have kids in the school, so I like to learn. That's what caught my attention and like to know what's coming up. So I don't mind. Yeah, of course, good. Well, Are you going to, is this going to include speakers from people that have been affected? They haven't said. They're just looking into someone who, for instance, uh, like there was the athlete, uh, Heron, you know, the basketball player. So, like they had this people out there that went through it and then go on tours, but it costs money. Right. You would be, you'd be surprised. I mean, they had to, and one of the girls who was in the, one of the high school members doing the research, I mean, I gave her a lot of, she 
worked hard on finding, but they cost money. If you know, they have to raise money to get someone to come speak. They don't just come for the good of it anymore. So it has it takes the right Really there are no parents out hmm. there that want to come and speak about what I you know, I don't think they looked towards that way. I think they look more towards because the kids might resonate towards somebody, you know, a professional athlete or a, or a, you know, a, even now, um, Hollywood people. Right. They would they just said what Hollywood people like Matthew Perry, you know, from Friends. He got like fifty thousand to come speak. That's what he gets. Well, we're a little okay. We've yeah, got so about twenty thousand here in Pembroke. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean fifty thousand oh, dollars to okay. come speak. Oh, and some of them are ten thousand dollars, <coughs> and some you know. So they're trying to. So they do. They're doing a lot of good work. I like to uh, go in, and it's very positive. And for such a subject, they're really putting a. They're doing their best to educate. So I like that. So good. Okay. Well, thank you for being a member of the board. No okay. Problem. Our last item that I have this evening under new business, which is the Board of Health Minutes. I have actually had a conversation with our administrator, Cheryl Landy, and I have asked her when she prepares the minutes, I would like to see them put out on draft form, posted out as a draft, as opposed to waiting them to be completed voted on, approved by the board, and, and posted. So what I've asked Sheila to do is to do a little research about how much time will be involved in doing that. I don't believe, and, and perhaps Mr. Thorne, if you want to speak to this, I'm not aware of any other board that does that. And for someone that tries to pay attention to what's been going on in the town, there's been a little bit of uh, controversy, for perhaps lack of a better term, surrounding minutes and I know Lou Stone is one of the selectmen as he's kind of been on top of that pushing boards to get their minutes out on top so what I'd like to do number one I asked Sheila to look into how much extra time would be involved in posting draft minutes out there and number two if it's something that Sheila is able to do without too much trouble I'd like to do a three month experiment where she's actually posting the draft board of boards of Board of Health minutes and then pulling them off once they've been approved by the board and reposting them. Um, I did a little research, and not that anyone cares, but it was under Article 4, Section 2 that allows me to at least ask to do that. So, again, you're here, Mr. Thorne. Are you aware of any other board that does that? No. So perhaps I'm, I'm being progressive, or perhaps it's not a good well, idea. I, well, I think a lot of the boards, and we probably <coughs> we probably need to be uh, bring uh, KP Law down again and refresh everybody's uh, um, you know the background concerning the open meeting law and the posting of minutes and things like that, because things actually changed again last fall. You know, as far as uh, there, there never used to be a time frame that you would have to post minutes. And now, as you know, there is. You know, they suggest that you have minutes posted either by the third meeting or 30 days, whichever is later. And so, uh, you know, so you can go to the third meeting and still not have approved meeting, uh, minutes, and then you could post them. But uh, I think if you post, you uh, you kind of stay one step ahead if you post a draft. So I'll do some reading. I'm sorry. I'm going to do some reading. Yeah, I've always been under the you know um, understanding that you know you first okay them, then post them. Now, when you have meetings, you have to post meetings in certain areas of town. That you're having a meeting, public meeting. So Up in the town you have guidelines office, for that. Yes. Now, when you have town meeting, you at town meeting, if you don't like the way an article has, you have a day to uh, get approval to rebring the article back up. If the uh, you know again, if it comes, it's town meeting is you know there's certain avenues you can take with this with minutes. Even though you're saying there's an article, I don't know of anybody that's posting them before they've even okayed for. After the next previous I don't meeting. think a draft would be um, something that we could legally post. Yeah. I, I the old the, the the legality part of it I would be um, would think we'd like to see if this would be something that, that this state does work with with 
thus being able to get a draft. My research tells me that we can post it as long as they are marked as draft form. Okay. Because they are clearly, then we right. legally can do that. Okay. I just, you know, is it more work for our administrator well, well, as well? That's my, it, you know, it is more work. I think and, she should and too bad for her. I'm joking. <laughs> it, it is more work, and that's why I have asked Sheila to kind of do a little research about how okay. much extra work it will be, report back to the board next week. And another aspect of that, the open meeting law, a lot of people don't understand, is that you don't have to be present at a meeting to approve minutes. I mean, it's common practice for somebody to, um, you know, not vote on minutes. But with a small board such as yourself, um, you don't have to be at the meeting in order to approve minutes. You don't have to be at the meeting that occurred Correct. to approve the minutes. Correct. For instance, again, Ms. McSweeney wasn't here two weeks ago, so she wasn't at that meeting, but she could be here this evening Correct. and approve minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as we say, because we were there, they are, everything looks fine to us, she can say, yes, it's okay, just as the meeting I wasn't at before, and you said everything looks fine, and I yeah. made the motion to accept. Yeah. Well, if a mem a m any member has the right to say, I wasn't present, I'm not comfortable. Sure. So. And that happens a lot, especially when you have a large report. Sure. So, I'm not looking to be cutting edge, I just <coughs> wanted to do something a little different, and, and I think for those folks in the, t in the town that are actually reading the minutes on a regular basis, I'd like to see the Board of Health maybe set a potential, set the bar a little higher. And well, it definitely puts in a little more transparency. Yeah. Yep. And Sheila may come back next week and say, in, in her opinion, it's going to be too much work. And I, and I, and I, will, respect, I will respect that. But um, if it's something that she thinks she can handle, I'd like to try it for like a three-month test period, and then we'll revisit it. So, okay. Okay. But may, I, may I just, if through the board to the town administrator, I agree there are some changes to the open meeting law that people are unaware of. If Koppelman and Page does come down, are they going to offer right. an evening, like a day and an evening, to make sure that both staff and boards will have yeah, equal and access? Third, thank, thank and they'll do it for Right. But I think that's, you know, that's nice for the board to have access to that, mm -hmm. yeah. as well as the staff. I mean, it's one thing for the staff, but it's another thing for the board members to be able to hear and ask questions, right, I absolutely. think, in my opinion. Yeah. The uh, if you do do the open, if you do have someone come in, the gentleman who came in the last time, I don't recall his name. Brian Riley. Uh, I might suggest maybe bringing in someone from that firm different than that individual, just to maybe put a different spin on the PowerPoint presentation. There'll be somebody at the planning board meeting tonight who is a former employee of the Secretary of State's office. Her name is Kristen Green. She might be the person that would come in. Okay. Good. So. Sheila, you look like you either swallowed the canary or wanted I'm to just, say something. I'm just beside myself. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, have a meeting with uh, Otis Hawthorne, the architect on the Boys Club, but we want to get the second phase of the project done this summer and that would be uh, windows and siding you know we did the roof this past winter so I want to capture Otis while he's got the file with him I, I would like to just state one thing please that we uh, we received the draft of the strategic planning survey that was sent out to a thousand uh, residents in town and we got uh, about um, 20, over 25% responded, which is good for a survey. This is a town-wide survey, so when uh, we are ready to have that survey published, all boards and commissions and departments will receive a copy of the survey. It's very interesting reading about um, what people have to say about the community. Um, you know, whether they want it to expand, um, do they want increase the industrial and commercial development. Um, it, it's very interesting reading to see how. And, and we suggest that you wait until you finish the whole survey and then read the demographics of who completed the survey at the end. We were thinking about putting it at the beginning, but then that would, uh, that would get rid of a little bit of the suspense because 
it's it's interesting reading. When will that be available for? Uh, within the next week or two. Okay, good. Excellent. Ms. McSweeney, do you have any closing remarks? I do not. Okay. Mr. Newman? For uh, Mr. Owen? For Owen, I mean? For, 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 I need yeah. to go to the same meeting with him. Yeah. Uh, I'm no, replacing someone who's no longer here, unfortunately. Okay. There you go. Do I hear a motion to, anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Well, you had two items left. That's why I was wondering what oh, you were doing. Oh, so. excuse me. Excuse me. My okay. apology. So I believe, Mr. Chairman, I, there are two items left. I just wanted to remind you, to you that there are two items. Thank you, Mr. Newman. You can make sport of me anytime you like on camera. So <laughs> it was just really a reminder. Upcoming issues: we've got our annual town meeting May eighth at the Pembroke High School, followed by our elections on Saturday, May twelfth. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you for calling that to my attention. Next board of health meeting is going to be on May seventh. The next Board of Health meeting will be May 7th. Wow, Tuesday. we've yep. got a busy few days there, don't we? Now, we usually meet on Monday, so it's two, is, uh, Monday the uh, town meeting? Tuesday is town meeting, yeah, Tuesday and is it, it's yeah. always on a Tuesday. Yeah. Oh. And we're meeting on Monday, May 7th. Monday, May I thought you said Tuesday. And that's election Tuesday. Saturday. Right. I was all over the board, man. Yeah. Okay. So you can make sport of Mr. Newman right back at you. See? Okay. Yeah. Just one happy board here. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Time. Me meeting adjourned, 644. 544. 544. <laughs> I think we'll have a... Uh, <coughs> A busier nice meeting two weeks from now and take a look at those two. Yeah, sure thing. Exactly. It's already funded, but someone's done. She, uh, Sheila's already forwarded that um, information oh. on receivership oh. to you. I forwarded it to her. Oh. She's already forwarded it to you guys. Oh. Wonderful.